Hey everybody, it's Brian from A Life After Layoff, and today I'm going to talk to you about how to land your first job out of college. Landing your first job out of school can be a nerve-wracking experience. You're interviewing for positions that you have little to no experience, and you're competing against a lot of other people. Now throw in a pandemic on top of it, and you're going to find yourself in a major uphill battle to land your first job. But it can be done, and I'm going to show you how to do it. In my career, I've hired hundreds of new college grads into entry-level roles. I've been in charge of my company's university relations programs. I've gone to the career fairs. I've partnered with the university departments in order to target the best and the brightest. And in that time, I've seen my fair share of candidates. Some of the students that I spoke with were excellent, and I just knew they were going to be future leaders. Then there was others that were just kind of average. Which one are you? The biggest advantage you have as a new college grad is the fact that you have the ability to start your career with a blank slate. If you've watched the rest of my videos, you'll see that I talk a lot about career strategy and how to set yourself up for success. Now, as a new college grad, you have the ability to do that right out of the gate. It's a huge opportunity for you. By careful planning and career management, you can start off your career with such a trajectory that you're going to hit your career goals much easier than, say, a person who went through 10 years of a career only to realize that they made a mistake years ago. So getting out of the gate on the right foot is super critical, and it's a huge advantage that you have. So don't let it go to waste. Now, keep in mind that as a new college grad, you're going to be competing with not only the people that you went to school with, but also all the other universities that offer the same degree program. You see, most major employers are going to multiple schools to fill those roles. They're not just going to one school. So you're competing against a lot of other people for these roles. You can stand out, though, if you know what you're doing. So let's talk about how to land your first job out of college. Setting yourself up for success. To start with, you're going to want to make sure you have a marketable degree. By marketable, what I mean is that there's a reasonable amount of employers looking to hire people with that degree type. Students studying business, education, marketing, computer technology, medical, engineering, those are all things that I think would be marketable degrees and there shouldn't be a lack of jobs. Now that's not an all-inclusive list, but those are generally marketable degrees. If you're studying something that's a little bit more obscure, you might have to get a little bit more creative in order to find those positions. Now keep in mind, just because you studied a particular degree type, it doesn't mean you're necessarily locked into that type of career path for the rest of your career. Now if you're not sure how marketable your degree is, here's an easy way to check. Go to your school's job posting system and go back through the last two semesters of job postings. You should be able to see how many positions were posted during that period of time. If your program graduates 500 people each class, yet there's only 50 positions posted, do the math. You're going to be up against some pretty stiff competition. You're really going to need to figure out a way to stand out from the crowd. Next, you're going to want to make sure that you understand the market in the industry that you're going into. Make a list of the major players in the market you're about to enter. Who are the most prestigious companies on that list? For example, if you're going to be going into an accounting career, you're probably going to want to be familiar with the major players like Deloitte, KPMG, PricewaterhouseCooper and Ernest & Young, the big four. For the strongest career paths, having those companies on your resume will give you the most rocket fuel. That doesn't mean that they're the only ones. You can also go work for a major corporation that has an accounting department. They all do. The point is, is that you really want to try to get the best quality employer on your resume as early as possible. Now, don't overthink it too much, but you want to try to target a name brand, a company that everybody has heard of, because that's going to hold more weight when you develop your resume as a young professional. Taking it a step further, what about the geographic region that you want to target? Who are the major players in that market? Now, if you're interested in a particular type of career path, but you live in a pretty remote area, you might have to consider relocation. But know what areas tend to have the best jobs in your industry. For example, if you're in tech, you probably want to target the Bay Area, Seattle, maybe Austin. Now, if you're on a finance career path, Charlotte's going to be a hub. There's a lot of major banks and financial institutions based there. Look at Nashville if you're interested in medical. And if oil and gas is something that you're interested in, you're probably going to want to look at the shale oil fields up in the North Dakota, South Dakota region, or you're going to want to look in Texas. Point is, is to know where the top players in your industry are located. Now, the next obvious step is to decide if you're open to relocation. If you don't already live in one of those areas. If so, your opportunities are going to open up a lot more. If you decided that you're moving back to your hometown, you're going to be limited to the positions that are located there. I found that the very best candidates and the ones that move up fastest through their career progression are the ones that are geographically mobile. They usually have two to three relocations on their resume before they end up settling down for a period of time. 
My suggestion as a recruiter is to open yourself up geographically as much as possible, at least in the beginning part of your career. Make sure you target one of those A-list companies and get that experience on your resume, because that's going to set you up for the entire rest of your career. A few years into your career, as you've gained experience and set up a nice foundation, then you can be more selective about the location. Okay, now that you know where the market is located and what types of roles are out there, you can start to formulate what you want to do with your career. Think about the next 10 years and where you'd like to see yourself ideally. Do you want to be a technical expert? Do you want to lead a team or lead a department? Do you want to become tenured in a university? Do you want to open your own practice? Do you want to become a business owner? As a recruiter, I am certainly going to ask you this question in an interview, so make sure you know the answer to it. Don't answer my question with a, I don't know, because you're never going to get hired. As you decide the career path you want, start to narrow down your list of opportunities and that will help you decide where to focus. Look at companies that have both a geographic and industry fit because those are the companies that you're going to start to target. So where do you find these jobs? You're going to be looking in multiple places all at the same time. To start with, you're going to be going to your school's career services department. This might also be called an employer relations department. Now, I know this sounds obvious, but you're going to want to make sure that you're active there. Set up an account and start looking at least a full semester before you graduate. Companies that are actively targeting your school will have their jobs listed there. I would suggest checking in at least once per week to see what new positions are listed. During peak times, I would even visit daily. Peak times typically are the very beginning part of your semester, so right when you start back to school all the way through about a month before graduation. You also get a chance to be connected directly with companies that target your school. You see, many major companies only hire from specific schools and specific targeted programs. So it might be a little more difficult if you're not from one of the target schools to get your foot in the door. It doesn't mean that it's impossible, but you're going to have an uphill battle. But by visiting your school's career services department, you'll get a better understanding of what companies are targeting your school. Now let's look at job fairs. Chances are your school offers at least one major career fair per semester. Bigger schools even offer career fairs targeted to individual majors. Make sure you're attending each and every career fair that's relevant to you. I would suggest doing this even starting as early as your sophomore or junior year. Try to actively engage as many of the relevant employers as you can at these career fairs. Don't just talk to the Googles of the world while you're there. Major companies are going to get swamped with candidates. You're going to have line 20, 30 people deep, while some of the less well-known companies won't have anybody at their booths. And the best part about it is you're more likely to talk to somebody who's actually involved in the hiring decision at a career fair than you would if you just applied for a position. So if you find a company that has a position that you're really interested in, ask to see if there's a lead recruiter or somebody that's in charge of the university relations program present. That way you're going to get a direct connection with the person who is likely going to call you for an interview. I've even pulled candidates aside that I thought were particularly strong and interviewed them right on site. I didn't even wait to set up an interview with them. So you never know what you're going to find if you go to the career fair. Company sponsored events. So what these are are typically hiring events that companies sponsor directly with the university. And a lot of times it's directly with the department. So you'll see pizza parties or information sessions being hosted. And usually they'll be put on a bulletin board or sent out in an email blast to the entire class. Keep your eye peeled for them. They are a great way to get your first position. In fact, when I was in school, that was how I got my first position. I actually didn't get a chance to apply for the position, but I went to the information session and promptly landed an interview. And then before I knew it, I had my first job out of school. If you want to try to get an insider's advantage here, make sure that you go into your career services department. And especially if your, your college, the actual degree program, has a university point person, go and talk to them about career opportunities and if there's any information sessions planned for the semester. As you attend these events, make sure that you sit up near the front, make sure that you're engaged with what they're talking about, show initiative that after the event is over, stick around for a little bit and try to talk to the recruiter one on one. You're going to have a better chance to stand out and make sure that they put your resume to the top. You might even find yourself having an interview scheduled before you even leave that room. Class professors are the next thing that I want to talk about. This is one of my favorite strategies. So what we would do is reach out directly to the department chair and we would ask if there was any high potential students that would be interested in a role. And in turn, they would ask their professors who was really standing out in class. And we would get these candidates into interviews before anybody else had access to them. Since the department leads and the professors were handpicking or cherry picking their best candidates, we knew a lot of times these were going to end up as a hire. So if your department chair doesn't know who you are, that's one thing that you need to start working on. Also make sure that your professors know you as somebody who is engaged and active and highly motivated in class. You never know when that referral is going to come in. The next thing I want to talk about is targeted companies' websites. So you've got that list of targeted companies that's going to work well for your industry or where you want your career to go. 
you're going to go onto their websites and actually look for entry level positions. Now this is going to take a little bit more effort, but it could be worth your time. In most ATS systems, which is considered an applicant tracking system, you're able to set up a profile and set up alerts. And that way, when you get that alert, you can be one of the first people in there to apply for the position. The more companies that you set these alerts up with, the more opportunities you'll have coming into your inbox. Now again, some companies only hire from targeted schools, but it's worth a shot. And the last major way I want to talk about how to find those entry level jobs is job boards. Now, you shouldn't be neglecting your LinkedIn presence. That's going to be one of your biggest. And then also make sure you check out Indeed and Career Builder and all the kind of standard places that you would normally look for a position. But make sure that you're somebody who's actively engaged and showing that you're really trying to network. How to stand out from the crowd. So you've got a lot of other candidates that are probably doing some similar types of outreach to employers and trying to get those first jobs. So how do you make sure that your name is called and not theirs? You're gonna need every advantage possible to get a leg up. And I've got a hint for you. Your classes are not gonna help you. You see every single candidate these companies are gonna see has the exact same classwork as you do. So you can't use that as an advantage. So it's not enough to rely on your classwork alone to qualify for a position. So what candidates do stand out? For me, it was candidates who had industry experience already. How do you get industry experience if you're entry level? Through internships and co-ops. If you've gotten to the point where you're actively looking for jobs, and that means you're getting close to graduation, hopefully you've done at least one internship. The more the better. Not only do these help you gain real life experience in corporations, but you also get a chance to learn what you like and you dislike about the job. For example, if you're an engineer and you think you wanna work in a plant, Try an internship in a plant to see if you even like it. While you're at it, try another internship where you work in a design firm so that you can try the exact opposite. That way you're gonna know which one you like better and where your passion truly lies. Another advantage to having an internship is it's gonna give you some ammunition to use during an interview. You're gonna be able to pull real life examples of relevant things that you've done that are related directly to the jobs you're interviewing for. You're going to be able to talk about the projects you were involved in. You're going to be able to talk about results that you achieved and maybe things that went well and didn't go well during your projects. You're going to be able to talk about the lessons that you learned. These are all things that you can pretty easily turn into an interview answer. If you're an underclassman, I suggest get on this now. Don't go and work a summer job at the swimming pool. That's not going to help your career. Go get an internship. Not only can you get paid to do it, you're also going to get valuable experience that's going to help sell yourself down the road. And I'm telling you, the candidates that have the multiple internships are the most in demand. Now, if you're watching this and you're saying, oh, I didn't do an internship, it's not too late for you. You are going to have a harder time finding a job, though, than the person who does. I would still recommend, even as you're approaching graduation, to apply for internships at the same time as full-time positions. Because chances are, you could still qualify for an internship. And there's no shame in working for the summer after you graduate in an internship role and gain that experience then revisit the job hunting cycle in the ways that we described earlier in the video. It's gonna help you get noticed. Me personally, I always hired the candidate who had the internship experience over the candidate who didn't. Let's talk about interests for a minute. So we always used interests as a leading indicator because in a lot of cases with an entry level candidate, there's not a whole lot to go off with. You're kind of looking at somebody based on potential. So we use interests as an indicator of what type of person they are outside of an academic setting. For example, if you're going into a technical role, I would probably wanna see somebody that has an interest in building their own computers uh, or tinkering with things like that. And a company I used to recruit for loved targeting kids who grew up on farms for engineering roles in plants. They tended to have great work ethics, they could fix things with their hands and they didn't mind getting dirty. If you have a creative hobby, make sure you highlight that. Companies like people that can think outside of the box. So list your interests. That'll help companies get a better idea of who you are. So demonstrated leadership traits are the next thing that I wanna talk about. Employers almost universally prefer candidates with leadership qualities. As an entry level candidate, you can show leadership qualities in projects that you were involved in, that you took a lead role in, maybe extracurricular activities where you were in a leadership position, and even part-time jobs that you worked where maybe you got promoted into a team lead role. So skills are another way that you can stand out from the crowd. As you've gone through your career research, hopefully you've taken note of some of the critical skills that these employers are looking for in candidates. Make sure that you have them. If you have a gap in, say, a computer skill that just isn't taught at your university, show some initiative. Go out and find a class and take it on the side. Download the software and start learning it yourself. If you show initiative in learning the skills that are required for those positions, you're also going to be able to use that in your interview. Of course, you're going to need a killer resume and know how to sell yourself in an interview, but that's another topic for another time. 
Remember, as you start your career, do so with a sense of purpose. The very best candidates are doing that. The average candidates aren't. You're gonna give yourself a massive leg up and start your career after college with the best possible momentum. And while I know it's tempting to accept the first job opportunity that comes your way, it is worth being a little bit selective in your first job because it's gonna give you that proper career trajectory. Hey, if you need any help with any of these things and you need help preparing yourself on how to approach the interviewing process, that's what I specialize in. I've got a website called lifeafterlayoff.com. Make sure you check it out. It's loaded with tips and tricks on how to land your dream job. Hit the like button and drop a comment. Let me know where you think your biggest pain points as an entry level candidate are. And make sure you hit the subscribe button as well. I've got a lot of content planned and it's all designed to help land you that dream job. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.